Hey, what's up? So I am super excited about this one because these are three techniques that I use that are super crucial when it comes to getting way better drum patterns. And they all kind of stack up on top of each other. So feel free to use the timeline down below to kind of jump ahead if you want to, but make sure you kind of get a good understanding of all of them. You can do this on hardware, software, whatever drum machine you might be, you'll probably find a way to do this. And yes, I do work at Electron, but that's my day job. I'm just here chilling in the studio, making some tracks, and trying to provide some knowledge on helping you make better music. So let's go ahead and jump into this first pattern, which has no velocity. Listen to this. Pretty cool, right? In some cases, but listen to it with velocity changes. It's almost as if we've added swing to this, but we haven't. And if we really just take out the ride, which is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, and then go back to the original version, pretty cool, but it's a little too static, right? And then back with the velocity. I think this just goes to show you how important velocity can be when it comes to making drum patterns. And one of the most important ones to me, especially when it comes to making house music is the ride, right? So if I cleared this ride out and we just put this ride like this, right? And let's go ahead and solo out that tom. It's cool, it's right on there, but if you want that classic kind of house vibe to it, you're gonna wanna take these here, which are the one, five, nine, and 13, and lower their velocity. And what we're trying to do is emphasize the, like the upbeat or the up hat, the x, 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 right? Because if we paired this with an up hat like this, right? It kind of helps beef up the idea or the concept or the groove of that feeling of dancing and pumping, right? For the lack of a better term, we're trying to get people to kind of you know, uh, 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 uh. but just to show you how powerful velocity can be, check this out. So we have this vibe right here, right? Kind of pushing us up, moving us back and forth, right? There's a little bit of a groove, there's a bounce here. But if we were to take this pattern, go into pattern three, look at that ride. And instead of saying on the, the one, five, nine, and 13, which is like the downbeat, instead of having that be the low, let's have that be the high velocity and we'll lower the velocity for the up hat section or the upbeat. I hope I'm using the right ter terminology here. So listen to this. We're gonna go ahead and lower these down to maybe 50. Sure. Now listen. How crazy is that? Now with this is like, bump, 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 bump. You want somebody to start going crazy? Then you bring them into this. And then we bring it into a, a groove. Here we go, pumping. Dun, 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 dun. And then back into All I've done is just change the velocity. That's it. There was one static velocity, one with the velocity up, and then one with the velocity on the downs. And you can see just by that little change how much it changes the vibe when it comes to kind of pushing and pulling and creating the emphasis and the feeling of where you want, I guess, people to move or to dance or what to feel. I think that that is just crazy. So I love doing something like this. All right, bring that back in. Listen to that, already, done, done. Same three elements, just different velocity. That's it, but it sounds like a completely different pattern. The patterns are the same, minus the velocity changes. Back in. Okay, velocity, we get it right, super important. We're gonna start putting it into practice. I'm looking at you, but let's move on to the next pattern, which kind of builds upon this idea. So we got this simple pattern here, right? Nothing too crazy, everything's just one bar loop but let's kind of introduce some weird polyrhythm stuff. So let's say on track three, which is this tom. Oh, and by the way, this tom is from my super weird, I'm not sure if you've ever heard of this, a Pearl Drum X. Yes, that Pearl, the drum company, they made an analog drum machine back in the day. It's a pain in the ass to uh, program. So I went ahead and recorded a bunch of samples, link to it down below, but it got some pretty weird, listen to that. Really dirty, grungy sounds. But anyway, that's besides the point. We're here, we got this tom sample. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the digitact up to be, um, every track has its own pattern length. So function, yes. Now I can say, all right, on track three, which is our tom, let's be 10 steps. Boom, new pattern, instantly. With that velocity in there, trippy, let's do three. What about one? I mean two, I should say, five. 
Right, let's do seven. Right, we'll change the master length to 32 to let this get even weirder for a longer period of time. All that's doing is saying, reset this pattern every 32 steps, even though it's playing at 12 or 10 or nine. It's gonna let it fall off pretty far and then kind of reel it back in. So here's another one at nine. Trippy, let's do seven. Right? My favorite is to leave it at one bar and then do these really weird like 10 step ones, which I just figured out in that last video that I did where I've never tried 10 steps before and it blew my mind. Now let's add another element to this, right? So weird percussion sound, right? And I'll just put this on one, four, and seven, sure. And then same thing, we'll say, uh, I don't know, five steps with this. Right, make this a little shorter. And then you wanna play this. Again, 32 steps, 11. Ah, 10. Five. Yo, endless, six. And play this in, right? When you're when you're tracking this stuff in, hit record, and then just start jumping around on here, grab that loop, repeat it, and you're off to the races. You got a ton of different drum patterns that you can pick and pull, take the loop, do this, do that, and create this really weird, interesting pattern. Because if we were to say, okay, we like this pattern here, right? And we go to pattern 10, and I'm just gonna paste this here. All right, let's launch 10. And then we'll set this to five now. Right? And then we go back to nine. And this is on six. Smooth rolling. Keep it going. And then back to 10. Whoa. Whoa. Right? And then back to nine without the kick. You see what I'm saying? This is crazy. Polyrhythms are absolutely nuts. Now, you can hear that we're kind of piecing together these bits and parts of a song. Maybe this is the breakdown, maybe this is the chorus, maybe this is the main part. How do we really tie all this stuff together? And that, my friend, is with what I call kick trips. I'm guessing they're drum fills, but let's jump to pattern 13. I kind of have this one right here. But again, just an idea, right? Pretty chill, nothing crazy, nothing wild is happening until we're gonna listen to our kick drum, which is just four on the floor, the most boring pattern you can do. But let's take advantage of velocity, right? So we'll put one here. Okay, pretty harsh, but bump. Go to your trigger page or wherever it might be in your software, turn the velocity down to this. Oh, roll it in there, but bump. Copy that, paste it here. Paste it here and here. Oh, right, and this repeats. This gets kind of crazy, this gets repetitive, but you can play these in. Take that out. Do something weird, let's go like this. Ooh. And after a while, you'll start to learn to recognize these patterns. One of my favorites is to take everything off and just bring it back on. Again, press record, that's all I ask. You're jamming, you're making ideas, just record it in. And I guess I shouldn't be preaching because I'm not pressing record and this sounds sick. I am so down with this right here. Boom, uh. Oh. And this isn't even with velocity. If I really wanted to program something in and make it do something kind of cool. I can say, all right, on these steps here, I'll turn our velocity down. We'll do uh, we'll do 50, sure. It's kind of a sweet spot, right? Okay, easy. But then on this one here, I'll say, trig condition, only play on the first time around out of every two. So now, it's gonna play on the first one, but not on the second one. Right, and we just took this 
one bar pattern and turned it into a two bar pattern because it's kind of always changing. And again, we can take this and push it even further. I can sound these last three, just give me a 25% chance that it'll happen. And then on top of that, only play this one on the second time out of every two. That way this one plays on the first and then basically it moves here. And then these three are gonna do whatever they want which will create this new vibe. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the velocity off of this one because these two are gonna place back and forth. Listen to this. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. This is how crazy that is. I mean, come on, it doesn't get any better than this, right? You just take a couple simple techniques, just put a little bit of nuance in there, a little bit of care, right? Slow down the sack, take a beat, pun intended, and just add a little, little something here, a little something special, and you'll be surprised at how crazy you can make things go, right? And make things kind of move and happen. Anyway, I appreciate you, my friend. You already know the drill. Until next week, share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge, power, peace. I wish I had a bass in here. What is this? Uh, oh, here it is. <laughs>